Hey everybody. <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty excited about what we're gonna be talking about. Mainly, we're gonna be talking about that. Know what it is? I'm sure you can figure it out. Um, I'm gonna show you guys some of the design work that went into making a B&M inspired model. Um, we're gonna go over the, some of the design stuff, uh, some of the, the build or assembly stuff. And at the end, I'm gonna show you the finished product. Um, there was a lot of time and effort that went into this. Uh, it took about a month and a half to design everything and then put it all together. What you see is the first three trains here, or, uh, not first three trains, but the first three cars. Um, the first and the second are unique, and then the third after that, it's identical because it has the ball and socket joint, which I'm sure you can see right here. So everything's assemblable. I want you guys to be able to assemble it, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So sit back, relax, and check this out. So with any great design, you need to start with a good foundation. And what I did is I started with the base plate is what I call it. The base plate is pretty much the, the plate that spans uh, all the seats and the wheel bogies. Uh, you don't see it in here, but there's actually a track reference that I use. And that's kind of how I set the gauge. Right now I'm putting the wheel cubbies in for the maintenance wheels. And you'll notice a lot of the work I do, there's lots of patterning, lots of mirroring, and lots of copying because a lot of this stuff is symmetrical. So might as well just design one or two and then copy it or over or mirror it over just to save a lot of time and effort because this takes a lot of time. So with the base plate right now, I'm just putting the bosses in and making sure they all line up and look well. And then I just linear pattern all around. When it comes to CAD design, like I've been doing this for over 10 years now and one of the things that I've always noticed is, you know, you, you, you learn stuff by trial and error. If it, if it works, you're going to keep doing it. If it doesn't, you learn how to do stuff better. Um, so that's why I start with the base plate. I make all of it symmetrical and then go from there. When it comes to seat design, seats are easy. You design one seat, you can copy it throughout the whole rest of the train and you're good to go. Another thing that I like to show is like, specifically for this mechanical feature is this is a shield that goes around all of the uh, linkages for the, the restraint. And I started, I actually made it as a sheet metal uh, in SolidWorks and what happened was when I went to go 3D print it, it was so thin it broke as I picked it off the printer. So I went back and now I redesigned it as a solid and made it a really beefy sheet metal-ish part. So there's a lot of trial and error that came into actually making parts that could be 3D printed at the scale that I was in. So there's a lot of learning. It wasn't just this happening overnight. When it came to the top of the train, the last couple features were the brake pad holder and then the wheel bogies. So when it came to the brake pads, you know, you can just design one and then copy it all over. So there's a lot of learning, a lot of back and forth between designing parts, 3D printing parts, and I think it was a lot of fun just to actually learn how a B&M train is assembled and then kind of tweaking it to make it 3D printable. So I thought that was really cool. Here you can see me just going through the wheel bogey design. It's actually really cool because you design everything to be 3D printed, which means you can take out some of the uh, added features and kind of dumb it down. So I did a couple of nifty little things to make the wheel bogey work like a real one, but also be dumb enough or dumbed down enough to be 3D printable. And of course, everything's got to fit together. So you gotta make sure you understand the tolerances of your 3D printer. You can't make everything nominal line on line, otherwise it won't assemble correctly. So you gotta keep these little things in mind when you go and design these things. So let's talk a little bit about assembly. You'd have these parts 3D printed, either SLA, FDM, however you do it, pretty much the same assembly procedures as follows. You start with the seat chassis. You, you fasten the bottom seat plate, so basically where your butt is. Then you put the back seat restraint, which is where your back is. After you put those two pieces on and you fasten it all down, you work on the restraint mechanism. So that's like the cylinder that goes across the back of the restraint. You assemble the lever arm and then the little bearing that goes, or the little sleeve that goes around the three millimeter shaft. You put that all together. Once that's together, then you finish the rest of the three seats and then you can bolt them to the base plate. After they're bolted to the base plate, you will then thread or push the three millimeter rod through all the seats and then you can put the bottom bar on and then you can assemble them 
uh, or actually at that point it's assembled, and then you can assemble the wheel bogies. So you just put the little bearings on the bogies on, put the drip trays on, and then the top portion of the bearing assembly or the wheel bearing assembly. So there's a lot of steps to that, but once you get through that, you can put the wheel covers on and you're pretty much done. Um, it took me about three hours to assemble one car, and then when I assembled the second car, it took me about one hour. So there is a learning curve. Once you put one together, the second one and third and so on will be much easier. And then you get a sweet product. Look at this thing. It's freaking awesome. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Um, everything just looks freaking great. And here it is. After all that work, we finally have the finished product. Uh, it turned out awesome. A couple of things that I want to highlight on this guy is I got the first two cars. Um, one of the cool little options is I, I made it so you can take the wheel covers off. All it is is just a screw in there. So I took the screws off so you can actually see the wheel bogies. A couple of things I want to highlight here. Um, the front car was entirely printed on my Form 2. Second car entirely printed on my Lulzbot and Flashforge 3D printers. So SLA, FDM. You can kind of figure out, you know, whatever machine you have. I wanted to make it so you can make it um, on any machine that you have. Heck, if you have an SLS machine, I don't even see why you wouldn't be able to do it on that. So this is the uh, final product. Came out great. I wanted to make sure it wasn't just stuck to like, only SLA users or only FDM guys that can make it. So that, that's kind of one of the cool things. Um, speaking of which, when I say you guys building it, I'm posting all the CAD files online, link below, um, to help support what I do. I This is the first time for me, so if the overall consensus is this stuff's cool, I will keep making uh, different trains at larger scales because at this large scale, you can get a lot of detail that you can't really get in these like little tiny little models. Like for example, you can make it so that the seats open and close, you have the little bar linkages on there. You can make the wheel bogies articulate just like the real train. Um, you can make the train actually articulate just like the real train as well. I only put it on the first two because I wanted to make sure you do SLS or SLA and FDM. So that's why I got the first two, but this is easily expanded. I have the third train design in the package. So if you want to make the third car, you can not only make the third car, but you can all go all the way back to eight. Or if you're weird, you can do seven. Depends on what type of train you're going for. Um, I also made a little cool stand that's at a just a ginormous scale. This thing's huge. Like look at look, like, it's bigger than my face. So you can do some pretty cool stuff with this. Um, heck, you can even put bearings on these wheels and make it into a model. I don't know if I'm gonna do that because, as I said, this thing's huge. No idea where I'd put it, but I think it turned out great. Um, and I wanted to be able to share with you. As I said, I'm just putting it online. I'm not doing it on Thingiverse or uh, anything like that because I kind of, you know, I spent a lot of time putting in effort into making sure this is as detailed as possible. Got instructions out there for you. So help support me, help, uh, you know, see if we can do some more stuff and uh, we can go from there. So thanks for tuning in. This is the final product. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Um, let me know how it goes in the builds, comment below. Another thing that I was thinking about doing is, if you like these things, um, post a comment below on what type of train you're looking for. Like, let's say you wanna do like a X2 style train, or you wanna do like an Intamin style train, or you know, even go old school and get like one of those old classic arrows. Like, I, I don't mind doing that. I think it'd be cool, but I only wanna do it if there's um, you know, a lot of interest. The reason I picked um, a B&M style invert train is because I was already working on Batman. I'm still working on that. And a lot of people said that it's not quite like a B&M invert. You know, you kind of, you know, skipped out and cut corners here. And I was like, but I can, I can, I can design one. So I designed it and I just painted it like Raptor because I'm a Raptor fanboy. Who doesn't love Raptor? And like the retro 90s style colors is just so cool. So that's why I picked uh, the Raptor theme. I'm not making a Raptor model. Like, there's already tons of those that have been done, and I, I, don't, I don't need to beat the beat the beat the dead horse on that. But a couple, there are a couple of cool things. So when you go and check out the link below to download your own set of CAD files, one of the cool things that you can do is check out the optional page. I have some of the optional wheel bogies that, as you see in more detailed pictures. 
there's, there's differences between them. Also, I split up the seat. So if you want to get really cool and change up your filaments for the different colors, like a Raptor and a couple of others, I gave you that. So I split it up into different parts. You can 3D print in different colors um, and glue it together and it'll come out looking perfect. You don't have to like, you know, put blue tape and all that. I, I tried that, turned out terrible. Don't do the same mistakes and I'm gonna make it so you don't have to do the same mistakes. So there's, um, yeah, an optional folder of optional files. Just take a look, see if that's something you wanna do. Otherwise, print the whole thing, paint it black, um, paint it whatever actually, do whatever you want. So, um, I appreciate you guys checking this out and let me know in the comments below what you want to see next. Thanks.